Let's just sew whatever. Hello everybody, today we are going to be cutting out the second option for the Taylor tote. I should really, yeah. Um, so this is exterior tile two. Exterior style number two, um, which consists of a pieced together front panel with more of a hidden connector versus the webbing handles that are all the way across the front. Um, I'm also going to be doing interior style one, but with the dividing pocket, but not the center divider, if that makes sense. So I thought it would be kind of fun to show you yet another way to make this bag because as with any pattern, possibilities are endless. So I know that getting that across can come out like a little bit scattered, but it's also just how my brain works. Um, so you want to make sure that you go over your pattern pieces and figure out which ones are only used for exterior style two, um, as well as ones that say refer to cut chart. So I've got my sectioned middle panel, sectioned middle main panel, and my sectioned middle main panel with interfacing. And this interfacing is going to get fused on your center panel at a quarter of an inch from either side. Um, and then kind of same with the section side main panel interfacing piece O and piece M. The way those get fused is so that there's like about a half an inch along all edges except that side panel which is a quarter of an inch. Um, so that quarter of an inch makes it so that the pocket within that slip pocket is the same width as the pocket on the front of exterior style one with the webbing because there's just a quarter of an inch. So it's a very small seam allowance. You wanna make sure that you um, secure those stitches as well as you can. Um, so I'm gonna need center divider pocket H and the interfacing Q for that center divider that I'm adding. I guess technically it's just a divider. It's not the center divider. So sorry that that's confusing, but I'm really excited. I also have the lower main panel which we are going to need for the lining. And now pretty much all the other pieces that are included are rectangles, which are given in the cut chart. The cut chart is broken down into exterior style one, exterior style number two, and then interior style one, interior style two. Um, I'm still in the processing process of editing the pattern, so Pardon me if I make little notes. Um, so I think I'm gonna add little titles here as well. Probably not pictures, just cause there's really no way to make a good graphic for that. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. We are going to be making exterior style two. And you could even like fold this in half. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Um, so that you don't get confused by either piece. Great idea, Lauren, oh my God. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with our vinyl. This is all going to be fabric. I'm gonna do the sectioned middle main panel with fabric as well as the pocket. So the pocket's gonna be a little sneaky because it's the same print. Um, and I am debating on making my upper panel in fabric because this vinyl's pretty thick. Um, but just know that your um, your upper side panel and your upper main panel. That's this piece here. Um, and that's gonna get folded on itself quite a few times. So if your machine is domestic, please make sure you use like an accessory weight vinyl or a cotton fabric for that top part, or it could get pretty thick. I'll leave this here, cause it's so pretty. Um, but this is the bag I've been using quite often and I have the center divider and I do like it, but I'm a really big fan of taking my Catalina and using it as a purse divider and with the center divider being that it is centered, um, I can't put the Catalina in there and my laptop. So I figured let's try something new. Let's make it even more confusing. Why not? 
Okay, you're good. You're good. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my heat press while I'm thinking about it. And then we will get started on cutting this bad boy out. I do recommend the interfacing pieces, even if you're using vinyl, it's just going to really solidify the structure of the bag and make it a lot easier to follow along with your seam allowances. So we can even just make an interfacing pile. And I know, honestly, I'm not a huge fan of patterns that have a ton of pieces but I really wanted to make sure that this pattern was easy to follow and you were going to get an end result that you really loved. So that's why there are separate interfacing pieces as well as um, regular fabric pieces. Um, so this one is going to be using handles. So I'm gonna start by cutting those first. And you could, of course, make these longer if you wish. Um, but I went with 23 inches because it adds, like, it's the perfect proportionate size for the bag. But if you are wanting them longer, definitely do so. And then while I'm here, I'm just going to mark down the center. If you are a fan of smaller handles on a bag, like let's say you wanted to use three quarter inch, you could absolutely do that. Just make sure that you cut your handles to then three inches and all of your connectors, instead of two, you're gonna make them one and a half wide. So there's my handles. You could even tape these. I'll go ahead and tape them. I have tape here for that reason. Um, designing patterns is incredibly difficult for me because I think, like, I could design a pattern all day, but it's writing it out in one cohesive way that I'm like, I just can't. There's there's so many different ways to get to the same conclusion and not, not one bag fits all. So I overthink options so that people can create something they love and it's really exhausting. Like, just stop, you know? Anyway, so there's my handles and I've got an Expo marker here. I've gone ahead and added some tape to my cut chart so that I can just cross off as I go. So I've got my two handles out of a contrast. Strap and crossbody strap connectors. Those are gonna be two by three, and we need a total of six of those. If you wanted to use webbing for this part or something else, you absolutely can. So there are three of them that we need. The vinyl that I'm using is one that I'm testing to carry on my website next year. I absolutely love the way it looks, um, but I wanna, of course, test to see how well it holds up. It has the same thickness as our Sienna, not our Sienna, but our clay vinyls, as well as our Twilight vinyls, so it's not really domestic friendly. I like to keep all my hardware and little pieces in these little photo bins. I also have this tag that says, I love you so much from Heartwood and Hyde. I think it, it's in the same tone of vinyl, but it's not quite 
a match, but that's okay. So there are my connectors, and then just moving up the list, I'll go ahead and cut out my zipper overlay. So I'm cutting it to the measurements given in the pattern. And then I just measure three quarters of an inch in on the short sides. Line up three quarter on the long side and just cut from side to side. And then just ever so gently cut across. And that definitely takes a lot of practice to get just right. There's our overlay. And now, again, if you have double-sided tape at your cutting table, you could go ahead and add double-sided tape just to the topmost edge. If your machine is not a fan of double-sided tape, you could just put it like an eighth of an inch in from the edges and we'll just set this aside. And I can cross that off my list. Okay, so lower side panel interfacing is next if I'm moving up and I'm not gonna cut that just yet. So we'll move on to pattern piece D, which is this lower side panel. And this pattern piece is angled, but I just wanna make sure, yeah, I think I could fit those both on this little section here. So I'm just gonna use pattern weights and cut along the edge. Normally I would like templates for this, but it's a brand new pattern. So there won't, there won't be templates for a minute. I mean, there may already be some available as we're speaking, but I feel like templates just make everything that much more accurate because you can apply even pressure as you're cutting the piece and it's nice and even. Okay, and then this is going to need interfacing so I'm just gonna set it on my heat press and move on. This piece, like I said, is angled so you should be able to lay this within the negative space left behind so that you don't waste too much vinyl. And this gusset fits like a glove, so just be mindful as you're cutting. So that's my exterior piece D, lower side panel. We are going to need those for our lining for this method. If you're doing the full center divider, you're not going to need this piece again. Okay, yes, this is my lining pile. It's just like, wait, what? Oop. Okay, rude, rude. <laughs> okay, so the bottom panel, I need to cut one of those. The pattern does not call for purse feet, but if you'd like to add them, you absolutely can. If you wanted to, you could also add a little bit of foam to the bottom, totally up to you. All right, so now I'm on the main panel slip pocket and I don't want this piece to be vinyl. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait to cut those out of my fabric here. And then the section side main panel interfacing, oh wait, no, sorry. Um, sectioned middle main panel interfacing and then sectioned middle main panel, that's also going to be out of my main fabric. 
section side panel main interfacing, pattern piece O, and then pattern piece M. Yeah, there it is. Um, so one of my testers and good friends, Nikki, decided that she only wanted the slip pocket to be on the front of the bag, and that is totally an option that you can do. If you wanted absolutely no slip pocket, you could still do these connectors. You would just cut out your um, pattern piece A for the whole bag. You'd have no pocket and just the little hidden handles in the top. So no, totally an option. There's no right or wrong way to make this bag, other than if it doesn't turn out, then you've probably made it wrong. So I need to cut two of these mirrored. So what that means is we're gonna cut one set this way, face up where I can read what's on the pattern, and then we're gonna cut one set flipped the opposite way. And a set is two. I'm just flipping it right now as I'm explaining it to make it easier. So you can see these are mirror images of each other. So this is one side. And now I can come and cut the other side. And there should be like just enough vinyl to make this bag with a yard. Even if you were doing like the middle panel and stuff like that. Um, I don't believe you could if you were doing a crossbody strap. So that's why I kind of recommend using webbing for that. And it's just faster. <laughs> Nope, that's not my pattern piece. This is. All right, so that is piece M. Ooh, I'm gonna make this even more confusing, but if you wanted your interior of the bag to have these kind of pockets, you could just do this on the interior too, um, but you probably wouldn't be able to add like a zippered pocket and stuff like that. Um, but we are not going to need this piece again. It's only for my exterior, so I'm just going to clip it in this pile. And let's see. Now the contrast is for our upper main panel and upper side panel. So if you have a domestic, this is where you would want to use a lighter weight material because this is gonna be something that's folded in on itself several times. I may try to just cut out two of each, which would make our exterior, so two of the upper main panel and two of the upper side panel out of the exterior, and then one set out of the lining. Again, I know that makes it more confusing, but that's what's hard about designing patterns. It's like there's just so many different ways it could be done, and my brain thinks of every single one. All right, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think I think I'll try that. So that needs to be two by 14. And like, I feel like if you watch my channel, you know I love to hack patterns, so why would my own be any different? So that's the top. Like I said, so this gets sandwiched on itself several times. So a good way to test if your machine can handle that is to just kind of like 
fold this on itself. So you'd be sewing through one, two, three, four layers, sometimes eight because of the side seams. So it's pretty thick. And these panels do get interfaced, so even if you're using a cotton woven for your interior or something, um, you would still have a decent amount of structure. So the next one is two by four. And what's cool is this bag can be made with minimal hardware or you can dress it up and use even more hardware. I'm like trying to imagine the bag in my mind and I'm like the zipper panel with this and the lining underneath would actually look really nice. So let's go ahead and do that, which means I'm gonna be dipping into my interior option cut chart. I'm gonna be using interior style one to cut most of the bag, but I will be looking into interior style for some of it as well, just to make it more confusing. Okay, 13 by one, two, and a quarter. This bag has a really nice zipper panel that fits like a glove inside so that you don't have stuff falling out of your bag. There is also the option to interface your zipper panel, and that's if you're using um, a kind of floppy or lightweight material. So that's totally optional. There's that, so I'm not gonna be interfacing this. So I'll set it there. Let's see what else. Cargo slip pocket, do, do, do. I think we're good there. Upper main panel, I've cut two. And the side panel, I've cut two. So I think that's it for my vinyl, which is good, because I've got just a hair left. You could make like a really cute zipper pouch to match it or something. And now we're gonna move on to our lining fabric. I'm gonna be using this waterproof cotton fabric. Um, this was just a scrap I stole from work, so hopefully there's enough. If not, I'll figure it out. There's some stains on it, which is why it's mine, but it is what it is. So while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my zipper panel piece. This is going underneath. So if there's a little flaw or something, it's not that serious. And if you're not sure if you wanna add interfacing or not, you can hold pieces together. And like, you can see this is kind of floppy. So it couldn't hurt to add interfacing. But again, I don't know that it's super necessary for the desired effect of my bag. Like I didn't use it on this and I feel like it's just 
a little more malleable instead of like structured and stiff. So you can just kind of see. And it could also be that you get your zipper attached and before you actually top stitch all four sides, you could even insert the stabilizer into the zipper panel before you finish, you know? All right. So that's my recessed zipper panel all cut. And now we'll finish the exterior requirements. But I know that this is going on the interior of my bag, just to make it really confusing for you guys. <laughs> A really nice option. I like it. I like it a lot. When I was recently teaching at um, So Bagical, I realized some people actually really hate options. Like, if you were to say, you know, you can use this or this, they're like, well, I don't know what to do. I'm trusting you to tell me. And that's not something I really ever considered. So it was a very eye-opening for me to be like, oh, that makes sense. You know, sometimes you need the knowledge of what to choose, and if you don't choose, you don't have the knowledge. So it's really just like, wait, what? Wait, what? Anyway, it's a nice little ramble for you. Okay. Center panel. We're gonna mark off on our cut list that we've got our contrast pieces cut. So now I just need my sectioned middle main panel and main panel slip pocket. And this is a 5 by 14 ruler that I offer on my website. Just kind of perfect for cutting out some of the pieces for this bag. And yes, I did count just now to verify that it really was five inches wide. Because you just never know. I am that stupid. Not stupid, but slow, maybe? Ooh, you could add like a trim to the top of the pocket too, just to give it like some definition. That would be really cute. Maybe, maybe. All right, so this piece here is kind of dirty, so I'm gonna use it to line my slip pockets. Not ideal, but it's fine. I'd rather that, this bag is going to be for me probably, or I would disclose it, but like, it's fine. This piece is a little bit dirty as well, so I'll move on up. Okay. 
I also believe that this fabric is washable, if you were curious. And so I'm gonna put these right sides together. I'm not gonna add any interfacing. And then keep in mind, you are going to be sewing along the top and the bottom of this pocket at a quarter of an inch seam allowance to flip out so that it's not within your bottom panel seam allowance or anything. So just to save time, I'm putting these right sides together, putting them in my little pile. Oh, these need interfaced. What was I thinking? Right. And so that was our section, middle, main panel, and main panel slip pockets. So since my heat press is still on and my lining doesn't need any interfacing because of the materials I've chosen, I'm gonna go ahead and flip to doing my interfacing so that I can do that and turn off my heat press. I am reviewing my interior style one and my exterior style two as far as what I need for stabilizer. It looks like I'm gonna need a total of two pieces of Decaville Heavy, which is what I'm using for my stabilizer. I like to use a little bit on the lining bottom as well as the exterior bottom. I think it just gives such nice structure to the bag, so that's why that's my preference. Even if you're using like waterproof canvas, et cetera, I would highly recommend using the Decaville Heavy for that. And then you're gonna center that along the bottom panel and that's all I need for stabilizer. For the rest of the bag, I'm just using interfacing and I'm gonna be using SoFuse Plus for that. Let me go ahead and cut out my bottom lining panel. So this is the same piece as your main panel slip pocket, in case you didn't notice. There we go. And so we'll just interface this as well. And if you have trouble getting your stabilizer to stay in place, you can warm it up on your ironing board really quick before it starts to like fuse and that'll just get it tacky so you can set it in place and then fuse it down. So you see that nice, that's nice structure. I like it. Mm, yes, look at these colors together. I love it so much. All right. Now interfacing, you could use SF-101 or whatever you have sitting around that's not Decaville Light. I don't know that I would really recommend Decaville Light for this. I haven't tried it, I feel like it would be a lot. If you're using a cotton woven, Decaville Light would be a good option, but I think for vinyl or anything like that, it might be a bit much and it would be hard to turn. Um, if you trust 809, if you have like craft fuse 809, you could try that. Otherwise it might be a bit much. Okay, so stabilizers. Got those cut. Boink. Boink. Um, and then for the interfacing, 
There's only the one and it's optional. If you want a super structured bag, you can repeat the interfacing that's on the exterior for the interior, but I think it would be too much. Um, I've also, like for this one here, I did use foam in the gusset, but the bag is good without it. It just depends on how much structure or oomph you want the bag to have as it falls over. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> This is my scrap mess. Um, the upper main panels just use a very small amount of interfacing. So if you have a bunch of scraps, this would be really great for that. If you don't have the mental energy for scraps, totally get it. So I'm just gonna like cut a big chunk and then cut it down so that I'm not awkwardly cutting out a bunch of little pieces because this is just a one by 13 interfacing. And you might think like, that's such a small amount. Is it really necessary? It is necessary. I once thought interfacing was silly and unnecessary, but I wasn't a bag maker. I am bag maker. Hear me interface. That's enough. And now this is going to go on all of our upper main panel. We're gonna center that. If you need to mark out half an inch along all sides, do it. Do it. I'm just gonna eyeball it. It'll be fine. I actually have to cut out 16 for class kits and I'm just like, I'm excited because it's an easy bag, but it's also like, whoo, that's a lot. Ooh, that's a lot. All right, there is my interfacing for that. And while that's fusing, I can go ahead and cut out my one by three that I need four of, which is 12. No. Yeah? No. Maybe. Sounds right. Could be. So it just adds such nice structure. Look at that, I was right. Go me. I will say I feel like I learned a lot from making patterns from KR threads as far as like perfectly placed interfacing and what a difference it makes to bags. So I'm gonna give credit to Sandeep for that. Hopefully I'm pronouncing her name correctly. There's that, and now we just need our pattern piece O, and then there's a cut measurement for the other. And this straight piece goes on our center panel. And this gets interfaced a quarter of an inch from the side edges and half inch from the top and bottom. I 
And I do recommend that interfacing. If you are worried that your fabric choice might be a little light, like too lightweight, you could always add two layers of this interfacing. It's not within your seam allowance. It's technically just within your top stitching. Um, so it shouldn't be too bad. But if you're worried about it, you could always just do like a woven and then the non-woven. Middle, lower side panel, section side panel. Okay, just four, no, six more pieces of interfacing to go. Oh yeah, I just love Sophie's Plus so so much. Okay, these pieces are next. And this one you can nest within the negative space of the other. Cut out this. If you use foam and you're using this interfacing piece, you want to make sure it's fused really well because um, you really only top stitch through this once or twice, like you top stitch through on the bottom panel and maybe a little bit when you top stitch the bag, but um, otherwise you're gonna wanna make sure it's fused. Okay, I don't need this piece again, so I can plop it in this pile. And that was piece C. Whoops. Throw that anywhere. Let those cool off. I really like the idea of folding that in half. I can it's like propped up looking at me. It's ready to go. Where did it go? Right here. Ah. Alright, sectioned middle main panel interfacing. We do not need it. Again, I can measure it just to make sure, but I think I already did. Yeah, okay. Good. And then, this isn't related, but the divider center pocket interfacing, I'm gonna use foam again for that, but you can use whatever it is you would like. And, for this piece, you really want to make sure that you're cutting that curve, et cetera, as accurately as possible because you're going to be sewing just like right along that as you put this bag together. So if that curve isn't cut perfectly or as perfect as possible, you're going to know. Who's going to know? Oh. 
All right. So since I folded those in half, I have a mirrored piece. I folded it in half on the long edge. Oh, that's going to be so nice. And then again, this is a quarter of an inch against the side edge and half an inch everywhere else. That is going to be it for our exterior of the bag. And that is it for the inner facing that we need to cut and fuse. So before I move on to cutting out my lining, I'm just gonna go ahead and like make a little pile of all the things I need for my exterior so that I know when I start putting the bag together that I have everything I need. And it's so funny, like all these little pieces will make a bag. You kidding me? No, I think you're lying. So this is going to be exterior lining, etc. I picked out this for my strap. I think it'll look really nice. So I'll go ahead and cut it now. No, I'll just keep the whole thing for the strap. That'll be good. There are some bags that I'm not a fan of this cotton webbing on, but for this bag, I just love the way it looks. Um, like the the woven handles on that bag over there just are so delicious. All right, that's my interfacing. We're done with the exterior, so we're moving on to interior options. And I'll do the same little fold in half trick for this guy. The hardware I need is listed as well as the sizes to cut zipper tape, so if you want to hold on to it, hold on to it. Just hold on, we're going home. Just organize my life a little bit. We're still recording, yes. I swear, like if things aren't in the right spot, my brain is like, what's happening? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Didn't use to be. It's chaos, I liked it. Main panel, don't need this anymore. So I do need this, this, this. I cut out my bottom panel already, so we can move on. Let's go ahead and cut out side panels. So I see a nice little spot here. So there is a note about the cargo slip pocket. There's non-fraying fabric, which would be waterproof canvas. Um, I don't think the waterproof cotton is 
immune to fraying, so you may want to cut that to the 17 by 18. Um, you could also, since this is directional, you'd cut that into like two 17 by 9 chunks and just use like a quarter of an inch seam allowance along the top. Um, I might end up using water resistant canvas for my cargo slip pocket, um, which means I would need to cut it to 17 by 18. So that's just my little spiel on that. Uh, my main panel slip pockets, I already did. Love that for me. And this print is somewhat directional. No, it's pretty directional. Um, so I can't do my little negative space trick on this one. I'm gonna have to waste a little bit of fabric. Normally I like to design non-directional for that reason, but Sometimes it is unavoidable. I think it also depends on your tolerance for directional print. If you can stand it being a little bit upside down, then do it. When you are deciding on what interfacing to use, you also want to keep in mind that some interfacings are heavier than others. So the more interfacing you add to a bag, the less, the more weight you're adding, truly. Okay, so that was lower side panel, pattern piece D. Eight by nine zipper pocket. So I like to kind of clip this to my zipper overlay so that it's ready when we attach it to the bag. I'm creating a little pile for my lining pieces. Okay. Oh. So literally all that's left is my slip pocket because I already cut out my bottom panel and then my lower main panels. And then because I'm dipping into interior style too, I'm gonna cut out the divider but I think I'm gonna have to use a different chunk of fabric for my lining pieces because that's too big, too big. I mentioned this in my other cutting video, but in case you did not watch that, um, you could also use a sub lining, I'm gonna call it, where you have your divider center pocket, but if you wanna use an even cheaper fabric to line that or something lighter weight, you could use a sub lining fabric or an additional lining fabric for that. Um, I don't know if I wanna do that for this piece or not because I want the softness against my laptop, I guess. Ooh. 
Ooh, that's going to be pretty. And then I end up quilting foam to that piece. Oh, I might be able to get half of a divider pocket and like, may as well. Not a divider, but the cargo. So that would be 17 by nine. And this is eight. I mean, it would just be a little shorter, which isn't the end of the world. Or I could go from this direction and get the whole thing. Yeah, we'll do that. So to get that nine inches with this eight inch ruler, I'm going to line up one edge with the top on my cutting mat and then find the one inch from there. So this is one inch above my ruler and then I'll cut the rest off. So now this is all that is left. Not a ton, but again, you could make a cute little matching something or other. And now I, I feel like this would fare well if you didn't want to line it, but I, I am going to line it. I just, I don't trust it. Let's go ahead and grab another chunk of this. Uh, and that wasn't really a full yard anyway. Yeah, that's my bottom panel. I realized this week um, one of my pattern, not one of my patterns, one of my videos that released, um, I asked a question, I, I guess. I asked if people liked penguins. I don't know. Um, but there were a lot of random comments about penguins, so I assume I must have said something about penguins. But fun fact, I, I really don't remember what I talk about in these videos. Especially since I film months in advance, weeks in advance nowadays, like I, I really don't remember. What did we talk about? So this is our lower main panel. So this is going to have, <clears throat> this is going to be part of our lining. Doesn't need any interfacing. And if you want to save time, you can mark your centers at the cutting table. And then keep these separate from your divider piece because it may be a similar shape, but it is different, a definitely different height. Okay. 
I need another of this divider center pocket and I'm gonna do something a little lazy. And I'm just gonna lay this down over top and kind of roughly cut it out to match because I'm gonna end up sewing around all these edges anyway to create my shape, create my pocket. Um, so not uber worried about it being the exact same size. And if you are, that is okay with me. You do it. Go ahead. So that's our lower main panel, Oops. part of our cargo slip pocket, and then we've got one more. And that's, that's it. If I want to do that um, divider center pocket, I just need f two interfacing and four lining pieces. I think I'm gonna use this for the lining of this panel because like these together are pretty, they coordinate, but I feel like it's a lot, but that's just the inside of the pocket. So like, it's not a big deal. So I can cut this. folded in half around this. If you're going to use this method on multiple pieces, just make sure you're using the same piece every time. Don't use the one that you cut out based off your piece. Otherwise, it's just like a really big game of telephone. And by the end, the pattern piece is the wrong size. Just saying. And like this top edge, I do want to be as straight as possible because this is where I'm going to add my zipper. So I'll go ahead and lay my ruler down to cut that. Excuse you. Go away. And then that last step is just going to be two pieces of foam. Yeah I'll, well, yeah, I'll still do two. I was like, do I want to do two pieces of foam or just the one? Since it's not in the middle, it doesn't need as much structure, but I am going to be quilting it. So that'll kind of break it down a bit. And this is cut quite a bit smaller than the rest of the panel. So that it won't be within your seam allowances. Just make sure that you account for the fold as you're folding this over. So that it's not too big.
All right, y'all, that is it for cutting out this option and version of the Taylor Tote. I hope you will join me when we sew it all together because this one's gonna look so good. Oh my God, side note, we'd never cut the other piece for this. So let me do that really quick. Um, oh man, I don't know. I, I think I'll do this dark, no, I don't know. Teal? Teal would be fun, it's kind of a pop. I don't know, this is on top. I don't hate it, I don't hate it. Let's do this one. So I've cut one side to the correct squares. Ugh, now I cut the other side, but it's like dead on. So there's nothing to cut. <laughs> That's fine. All right, now we're officially done. Okay, bye.